If you watch Pokemon when you were a kid, you must remember this device called a Pokedex. In short, this was the finest tool for a Pokemon trainer to learn information about any Pokemon they would encounter. If many toy companies have tried to reproduce this great piece of technology, it honestly has never felt like a real one. But this was until today. We all have phones in our pockets and interestingly enough, it is almost the exact same size as a Pokedex. Now, you know me, I love React Native, and it's actually the 20th Pokemon anniversary this year. So I had to give this a try and the result you'll see is pretty convincing. So the most obvious question you might have at this point is, how did you get there? Well, of course I could just hand you the code, but I find it more interesting to go through each step so you can build your own Pokedex, but also improve the one I've created. Okay, let's start with the skeleton of our Pokedex. This is how it looks like without any logic or animation. I call the upper part the cover and the view under it the Pokedex. If I remove the cover, this is what we'll get. As you can see, there's no Pokemon to be seen yet. However, we are already fetching data of a random Pokemon using the Poke API. It's a free source of information that you can use straight away in your application. I'm using two different endpoints here just so we get the name, the description, and the Pokemon image from the API. All the logic lies inside the fetch Pokemon function, which you can take a look at in the repository if you're curious. But long story short, it takes a Pokemon ID and then returns an object with all we need for our Pokedex. Now, what our component does is to initialize our upcoming data about Pokemon inside the Pokemon state. It matches the output from the fetch Pokemon function just so it comes handy later on. We then have an update Pokemon function which generates a random number between 1 and 151 since it's a first generation Pokemon. It then updates our state using the API response. For now, update Pokemon is just called after a component mounted inside a use effect hook. All right, so we have the visual structure, we have the data, but our Pokedex is still closed. So why not making it a little interactive? What we need is to show or hide the cover when we touch the screen. So that's pretty simple. We need to play with the cover translate X style so that it can move horizontally and animate just like a sliding door. Basically, when the cover opens, we should translate the whole view to our screen size just as if we were pushing it all the way to the right. Likewise, when we're closing it, it should just go back to a zero translation, which should take it back to the left. Obviously, at this point, it just jumps from one position to another, so we need to smoothly animate it. I'll be using Reanimated 2 for this, but don't worry if you're not familiar with it, I will still explain the concepts, so bear with me. Because we need to animate the translate X property, let's create an animated value called a shared value in Reanimated that will start at zero since we want the cover to be closed by default. Now to add a shared value to a view style, you need two things. First, because it's using an animated value, the view needs to be animated. So let's turn it into an animated.view. And to replace our translate X with our shared value, we need to wrap the styling in an animated style, which is also very specific to reanimate it. Okay, so everything is in place, but nothing animates yet. That is because we haven't animated the translation value, so let's do this. We want the whole screen to be touchable so that it opens and closes the cover. For this, we'll create a function that we'll call toggle cover. All it does is if the translation is currently at zero, meaning it's closed, we animate it to the screen width size over 500 milliseconds just so it moves all the way to the right. Otherwise, we should close it and just animate translation back to zero. I use width timing because we don't want the cover to bounce, it should just be an easing out animation type. 
All right, we have the function. Now we need to trigger it. So let's wrap our pocket X with a pressable component. So whenever we touch the screen, toggle cover will run. Also, the pressable element won't be touchable when the cover is up because our cover is on top of our Pokedex. So we need to let React Native know that even if we touch the cover, the touch event should be passed down to the next interactive element, which is our pressable. To disable touch events on a view, we can simply set its pointer events property to none. Perfect, it now opens and closes the cover pretty smoothly, but as you can see, the Pokedex screen remains all black. That is because in the original Pokedex, there's a black screen before it starts showing the Pokemon image. This overlay is also there in our component, but it remains black. So the solution would be, once we open the cover, to animate the opacity so that it fades away and show the Pokemon image underneath. For that, I will create another shared value up there, and as you might have guessed it, another animated style. Remember to turn the view into an animated view, and we're good to animate the opacity. In our case, it should animate to zero after the cover has opened. In reanimated, you get a callback that can run when an animation is finished. We can add it to the cover opening animation and animate the overlay opacity to zero. One thing we need to not forget about is to set the opacity back to one after the cover has been closed, so that when we open it again, the animation can start to fade away for another Pokemon. By the way, when we close the cover, we should fetch another Pokemon so that next time we open it, it would show a different one. So just as we did when the component mounted, we should call update Pokemon again, but this time after the cover has been closed. By doing so, you should get an error. The message is pretty explicit, but in short, because of the reanimated architecture, all the animations are running on the UI thread which is a separate box from our usual JavaScript thread. When you update the opacity, it has no problem to update it on the UI thread because all the animated styles are living there. However, for update Pokemon, it is a plain JavaScript function that should probably stay on the JavaScript thread. To make this happen, you can specifically tell reanimated to run this function not on the UI thread, but in the JavaScript box using the run on JS function. Okay, we're almost there. The fun part is to make your Pokedex speak, and for that, we'll use the great Expo Speech library that adds text-to-speech functionality in our app. The idea is when the cover opens up, our phone should read the Pokemon name out loud, then its description. To read some text with Expo Speech, you just need to call speech.speak and give it a text you want it to read. Since there will be some logic to it, let's put it all in a new function that we'll call say Pokemon name. So first, it should say its name, then the description that comes from our state. And since this should happen when the cover is open, we'll call it from the open animation callback. Again, because this callback is run on the UI thread, we need to explicitly let Reanimated know that our JavaScript function should stay on the JavaScript thread. Now one problem is that a normal Pokedex uses a far different voice from the normal one we have at the moment. Drazi puts enemies to sleep then eats their dreams occasionally gets sick from eating bad dreams. Luckily, we can tweak speech parameters so we get a similar voice. Let's lower the voice speech so it sounds more robotic and increase the speaking rate just a little so that again, it doesn't sound like a human. Oddish. During the day, it keeps its face buried in the ground. At night, it wanders around sowing its seeds. Pretty cool, isn't it? Before I forget, we should also interrupt the talking if we happen to close the cover before the voice has finished. To do so, when we close it, 
we can call speech.stop that will stop the current speaking. Great, there's one last step I promise to make this a real Pokedex, the flashing lights. When the Pokedex speaks, its blue light is flashing and we could do just the same thing in our application. The idea is that inside that blue circle, in the top left corner, we have an inner circle, which is another view. We could play with its opacity, going from 0 to 1 and backwards, as long as the Pokedex speaks. For this, let's create another shared value, Light Opacity. As always, we create an animated style for it, turn the view into an animated one, and add the animated style to the list. Great, we're ready to animate the opacity when the text-to-speech is happening. The lights just start flashing when the speech starts and stops after it ends. Let's create two functions for this, where each starts or stops the flashing animation. The idea of with repeat is to repeat a given animation. Minus one means that this animation should be repeated infinitely, and true is for the animation to go back to its original value after it's been animated to 0.5. So it will go from 1 to 0.5, then from 0.5 to 1, and so on, back and forth. To stop the flashing, we just animate the light opacity back to 1 using a timed animation. All right, now let's use these two functions with the speech library. It takes three different callbacks for what we're doing, onStart that runs when it starts speaking, undone and unstopped when it ends. We'll move the overlay opacity animation when the voice starts, just so it aligns with the original Pokedex. Then it will start flashing the lights and stop them when the voice is done speaking or interrupted. Mankey, extremely quick to anger. It could be docile and eminent then thrashing away the next instant. Chansey, a rare and elusive Pokemon that is Clefable, a timid fairy Pokemon that is rarely seen. It will run and hide the moment it senses people. Nice. Honestly, for a kid like me who has grown up with Pokemon, having this on my phone is truly something. And I hope you find it cool to build it with me. If you want to see the code, you can find the repository link down in the description. Remember to subscribe if you don't want to miss the next videos. Thanks for watching and see you next time.